This conference will now be recorded. Okay, guys, let's get started. So today is uh, 7th August. And the first point what we have to do is we need to create accounts in Active Directory. So currently we have only one account and that is Karthik. And Karthik is being utilized here on domain controller. So we are using Karthik account on domain. Now we have three more computers. We need three more accounts for database. We need one account for SCCM. We need one account and for Windows 10. We need one account. So there are three more accounts we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the domain and full screen and I'm going to launch Active Directory. So let's uh, click on tools and then Active Directory user and computers. Okay, so this is Active Directory. In this one, as you see, we have uh, these uh, folders, or we call it all an organization units or containers, right? Now I'm going to click on View on the top and then choose Advanced Features so that I will be able to see more containers here. So I have a user, and inside that user, I will be able to see the built in account, Karthik. Karthik is what it's a built in account, okay? And that is what we are using on domain controller. And this is uh, this account has all the privilege. It's a domain admin account, enterprise admin account, schema admin account. It, it is a member of all the uh, admin uh, groups. Now, what we have to do is we need to create more accounts. So either you create the account here or you create a separate folder. I'm going to create a separate folder. Right click on lab.com and choose new and then organization unit. So organizational unit is what it's like a separate container. Okay, so I'm yeah. going to say uh, SCCM lab. That's the anything you can type in here. Okay, I'm just going to say SCCM lab and inside this I'm going to create accounts. So one by one I'm going to create accounts. So for first account for SQL server the database. So I'm going to say SQL admin. Okay, SQL admin and SQL admin. That's yeah. the account. Next, password and check the box password never expires and finish. Clear? That's the first account we created for SQL server. The second account for SCCM server. So let's click on new and then choose organizational unit. Sorry. New and organizational unit. Sorry, not organizational unit, user, right? Yeah. New and uh, then user. This is going to be SCCM admin. Okay, and one word SCCM admin. This is second account. I'm gonna create next password. Okay, so two accounts are created. Now the third account. Um, that is for Windows 10. You can create, let's say, Siva. Okay. Okay. Our user on. Okay. okay. Anything of your choice. No. Okay. Fine. Okay, so we created yeah. three accounts, yeah. right? Yeah. And the password of all these three accounts 
are same password at the rate one two three okay now these accounts what we have created they don't have permission to log in we have not added these accounts into the remote desktop connection uh, remote uh, group so that RDP, they will yeah. be able to log in right in rdp right um we let's add all these accounts into the domain admin okay so we have to you know when the account will have permission so that we will be able to install some applications as well suppose i need to install something so i need admin rights on that computer right so okay. I'm gonna right click choose all of them and choose add to a group and domain admin okay yeah. so what we have done is we have done two things one is we created account the second added into domain admin added accounts into domain admin group yeah. so that they will have permission now point number three is add login credentials into remote desktop connection manager so that you don't have to enter the username and password again and again currently what is happening you know when you are logging into any computer right either it is domain or uh, database or any computer you have to enter the password right enter the username and password so let's make it permanent right click and properties and then log on credential and uncheck this box okay yeah. now I'm gonna say this is Karthik this is the in built-in account what is the password yeah. for this can you enter the password, password. password. Same yeah. password. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and domain is lab.com. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So next time onwards, if I disconnect, let me disconnect this. And now double click on domain. It won't ask you any username and password because we have already supplied the username and password. Understood? Clear? You see, yeah. I just double clicked and it got connected. So that will make our life easier. Now, second one, database. Right click and go to properties and log on credential. And this is going to be SQL admin, right? SQL admin, yes, right. Perfect. Yeah. Lab.com. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. When I double click on database, it should not ask any username and password. It should directly connect. Let me check this box so that it won't ask again. SCCM admin. Let me enter the username and password for SCCM admin. Right click and go to properties. And this is going to be SCCM admin, right? lab.com for windows 10 it is siva right rajnish you following yes sir Okay, so I double click on Windows 10 as well and then check the box and then say yes. Now, all these computers are going to get connected. I'm going to click on File and Save because we just say entered the username and password so that mm -hmm. that configuration will be saved here. Clear, everyone? Yep. Point number four is install wadk and win win pe on sccm ps box 
we need WADK. WADK is what? It's a Windows Assessment Deployment Kit. So basically that will help you to modify your image, customize your Windows image, right? And you will also get a deployment tool so that you will be able to deploy a Windows image over the network through SCCM. Got okay. it? Yep. WinP is what? WinP is the boot image. You know, the, to make any com, a, any uh, computer bootable, we need the boot image. For example, if you make a bootable disk, what happens? The moment you connect the compute the the disk or the USB on the laptop or a desktop, automatically it comes into autoplay, right? So yes, we need one pre-execution. Yes, pre-execution environment. So before the operating system loads up the boot image will boot the computer so that if you would like to deploy operating system you can use uh, the boot image in order to deploy operating system got it so we need these two things on sscm box so let's go to sscm server and i'm gonna right click on this and maximize full screen and close this uh, server manager now i am on sccm server what i need is i'm gonna click on this internet explorer and i'll go to i'll go to uh, https colon slash slash uh, tinyurl.com tinyurl.com slash um, WADK1903 WADK1903 okay that's the WADK which I have saved it HTTPS colon slash slash tiny Oh, sorry. I did not put the address correct. Tiny URL. It's not U R U L. Yeah. Tinyurl.com WADK1903. That's going to take you to my Google Drive. I have saved this WADK. You need to download that. That is not built in SSCM. No. Like service That's you are not... enabling that. It, it, it rolls on that. No, that is not built in in SSCM. You have to, okay. that is extra thing which you have to download and install. So I'm okay. going to run. And that you have to do it on SSCM box. Okay. Make sure you are doing it on SSCM. Let's go next. except now we need only couple of things not everything here so i'm gonna remove everything un unwanted things from here so what we need we need deployment tool right as you see tools to customize and manage windows image and to automate installation so basically this will help you to customize your uh, windows image file plus it will help you to deploy and automate the windows image okay the windows 10 or windows 7 or windows <laughs> server operating system plus usmt usmt is to capture user data for, to migrate user data from one operating system to another operating system so suppose if you would like to migrate user data from windows 7 to windows 10 so you can capture through this tool got it so we need these two things and I'm going to click on install and it's going to ask for yes. Let's say yes. Now in the meantime, while it is happening, let me restart database. Why I'm going to restart database because first time when you start from Azure, it takes, uh, it does not give good performance. It gives slowness. So that's the reason I'm going to restart. Sorry. Uh, 
prefer to put it directly down. Yeah. Okay. So database, let's restart. Yes. Okay. So when you start from Azure, it does not give good performance. Okay. So okay, almost there. This ADK on SCCM. I am back on SCCM, guys. I restarted database and now I am back on SCCM. So ADK is now installed on SCCM box. Now the second thing what we have to do, we need to install WinPE https colon slash slash tiny URL dot com win pe 1903 that's gonna take yeah to my google drive download and run So ADK is done. Now we are installing WinPE. Let's go next. Next. Accept the license terms and condition and install. And say yes. Okay. So we started that one, right? Now, point number five, the next point. Download and install sql server on database box we need to download and install sql server now which sql server we should download either you download 2012 or 2014 or 16 or 17 depends on you or 2019 as well which uh, sql server you would like to uh, download and install i'm gonna download 2016 sp2 okay so let's do that. You may download 2000, anything which is greater than or equal to 2012. Got it? Yeah. Which version is uh, it? Uh, SQL Express or professional? No, no, not SQL Express. SQL Express is not for primary site. It's only for secondary site. So we need to install primary site. So primary site needs SQL Server, the full version of SQL Server. Got it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. SQL Express is the free version. Okay, that we need for secondary site only. For CAS and primary site, we need SQL Server. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's a prerequisite. So we are doing prerequisites. Okay. Oh, yeah. Before we install SCCM, we need all these things. Now I just logged in back to my database server. This is the database server. Okay. So let's verify which is the account we are logged in. Right click on start and run and type in cmd what is the computer yeah. name type in h-o-s-t-n-a-m-e host name so it is database that is fine then w-h-o who am i which account i am logged in with i'm logged in with sql admin so make sure you are logged into database server and the account which you are using is sql admin in case if you are logged in with a different account log off and log in back with proper account now i'm gonna go to internet explorer and i will download sql server uh, so let me download sql server so anything which is 2012 or 14 or uh, 16 https colon slash slash tiny url url dot com slash sql db2016 i think this is the link let me verify sql db2016 yes okay so that's gonna take you to my google drive and let me download here and it, this is sql server 2016 sp2 and the size of this is 2.8 gigabyte let me click on download anyway and save so this is i'm downloading it on database server guys <laughs>
Rajnish, so far clear? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, I would be preparing that notified file in weekend, so that I can try. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, I after this uh, session, uh, Karthik, please send this notepad file on WhatsApp. Yeah. The group, the group which I have created. Okay, yeah. in that. And Kasha, I also have the access of that tiny URL dot com. Yeah, yeah. Everyone will. Have. It's a like public link. Okay. Yes, go ahead and download. Because I already mentioned, because um, I have a very less activity here, so I would be able to work on weekends. Hmm. I have some yes, make sure. issues. Okay. So you'll be able to do it right on weekend? Yeah, because I have mobile data, not Wi Fi. So I, I am also doing my ships as well. That is the main thing. Okay. Okay, so it got downloaded. I'm going to click on open folder, right? And close the internet browser. I don't need internet browser. Let's me close that one. Now, as you see, this is downloaded and that is downloaded the disk image, the ISO image. If I click on view and file name extension, you should be able to see the ISO. This is the virtual disk which we downloaded from internet. Now right click on this and choose mount. Mounting means we are virtually inserting the disk into this computer. Clear? Yeah. And then we have setup file. Right click on this setup.exe and run as administrator. Say yes. And let me close this so i'm doing it on database server guys yeah this is the database box wherein we have downloaded uh, so in production what we do we keep the database sql server on a separate computer and sscm on a separate computer okay you can also put sscm and database on the same server that's also possible okay now installation new sql server standalone installation evaluation next we don't have license so i'm going going with evaluation which gives a 180 days free trial i accept the license terms and condition next and next You guys installed SQL Server before? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, Windows Firewall. So there is a warning message for firewall. That's okay. We will resolve this firewall issue later on. Next. Because we have not opened a few ports. Database needs 1433 Actually, these are the two ports which are needed, which we do, which we will do it later on. Now, for to make any server as a SQL Server, what we need? We need database engine service got it database engine service so that will help you to make this box as a sql server understood yeah. plus we need reports so i'm gonna choose this reporting services native so this is gonna help you to create and store reports in the database got it so these are the two things i need I'm gonna go next. Actually, in case I'll choose all the options, so what will happen? It will consume the you size. Can, or... you, you can also choose all the options, but if you choose all the option, it will consume more memory and process processor. Oh. So rather, uh, you choose only the things which you need, rather uh, instead of choosing everything. For we are choosing it only for SCCM, right? 
So okay. SCCM okay. needs only these two things. Okay, so choose only these two things database engine service and reporting services native. Okay, let's go next. Now, uh, basically, we need instance ID to connect to the database over the network. Suppose I need to connect to this database and uh, store data i need instance id so instance id is basically um, either you go with named instance id or default instance id so currently the default one is ms sql server if you would like to give, go with named instance id you can choose your named instance anything of your choice okay but i'm gonna go with the default one so ms sql server which will be the instance id next Now it's gonna create these accounts into the data, database server. These accounts, uh, basically Microsoft recommends that you use domain account, not this NT service account. NT service is, is the local account, okay? So instead of using this NT service, these service accounts will be managed by lab slash SQL admin, okay? If I use a local admin, any issue will happen or it will run? No, it, it won't have any issue. But in case if the service is stopped and you are trying to uh, start the service and if it needs password, you don't know the password, right? Okay. So SQL admin, you know, if you just enter the password there, in case if you forgot the password of SQL admin, you can just reset it from Active Directory. Yeah. yeah. So that's the benefit here. But you can also go with this account at an entry service account. It is not mandatory that you change it. Okay. Okay. Now password. Uh, yeah. SQL admin password. Let me just paste the password. I have already copied. And everything is going to be automatic so that in case if I restart the server, I don't have to manually start the services. It will be automatically started. Okay. Clear. Last one we have not entered. Last, lab. One, last one basically it does not let you change the account. Okay, okay, so by default, SQL browser runs on the local account. Okay. This is read only. Okay. So you can't okay. do anything here. Now collation. Collation is what? It's the language of the database. In which language you are going to install database. So you can install database in French. Dutch right uh, in uh, <clears throat> German but Microsoft recommends that you are, I mean Microsoft has given this that it is the only language which SCCM supports if you have a different language here like French or something else then you have to change that to this one SQL underscore Latin one underscore general underscore CP one underscore CI underscore AS that's the language of the database and if you click on customize you will get a whole lot of language like hungarian icelandic there are many languages available okay but we have to use the existing one sql underscore latin one underscore general cp1 cins understood yeah, default. yeah it's a default one in case if it is not there then you change that to this one okay next and who will be the database administrator so i'm gonna say add current user so this guy sql admin will have read and write access on the database got it yeah. plus i'm gonna add sccm admin sccm admin 
SSCM admin will have read and write permission on the database. So there are two accounts which will be the database administrators. Understood? Clear? Yeah. Why is SSCM adding here to pull the report and prepare for the purpose? Or any other? SSCM admin needs permission so that SSCM admin will be able to create database in this server. Okay. SCCM needs a database, right? So we will be using SCCM admin to install SCCM and while installation it will ask you to create database. So this account will have permission to create database. Got it? And a SQL admin is for backup in case if you are not able to log in with this one, you can use SQL admin to log in. Basically, this is the main account. SCCM admin is the main account which you need to add for uh, permission next but SA account will come right where it is system account. SA account SA account it won't come because if you choose this mixed mode then SA oh. account can be created and you enter the password of that SA account no, this is the SA account uh -huh. yeah so I'm, I'm gonna go with Windows account Windows that means only the domain account can use the uh, Okay, we'll be able to log in. Sure. Next. Install and configure the reporting services. Next and install. That's how you install database SQL Server for SCCM. Clear? Oh, yeah. Now, point number five. Uh, six is configure firewall via group policy. Anyone worked on group policy here? Yeah. Rajneesh, you worked on no, group question. policy too? No. I okay. have just basically ready, but I didn't get a chance to work on AD. Okay, so we need to open ports in all the computers like port 80, port 443, right? For SCCM and client communication, right? We need to open 1433 and 4022 on database server, right? Or we need to open 8530 and 8531 on all the computers for patch deployment. So there are certain ports which we need for SCCM and client communication, for SCCM and database, for SCCM uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, the other computers. Clear, everyone? Yeah. Yes. So we need what? We need a few things. Uh, so either you do it manually on each computer or you do it through group policy so benefit of group policy is you just apply the policy and that will be applied on all the computers rather than you manually do it on computers got yes. it yeah. so what we have to do is we need to go to domain controller because our group policy is there on the domain controller so let me go back to my domain controller and right click on this domain and choose full screen and close this Internet Explorer. I mean uh, this Active Directory and tools and choose group policy. Now group policy will help you to create. The firewall policy here. Now this is the group policy portal. OK. So which says forest lab dot com we have. Uh, that's the forest name and inside that forest we have domains how many domains we have we have only one domain and that is lab.com okay and inside this lab.com we have multiple um, folders like sccm lab we have created right that's the one in active directory then we have domain controller right these are the folders and group policy and our default domain uh, policy let me click okay Default domain policy, whatever the default one, and you know, if you type in the password three times incorrect, then the account will get logged. Uh, you know, uh, 
there are multiple default policies which are defined if you would like to see them then you click on settings and then you will be able to see those uh, policies which are being applied for all the computers i'm going to click on show all so these are the policies which are in default policy which are applied you see 24 password and 42 password maximum these are some policies which are defined i am gonna create a new policy okay for ssm right click on lab.com and choose create a group policy in this domain and link it here and you can name it anything of your choice like ssm firewall policy clear yeah and click ok now the when you create a policy it is a blank policy we have not defined anything let me just click on do not show this message and click ok so this sccm firewall policy which we have created that's a blank policy we haven't created anything okay so we need to right click and then choose edit now in this one what we have to do is uh, there are two types of policies computer configuration or user configuration i'm gonna expand the policy in computer configuration and then expand windows settings and then security settings and then we have windows defender and then we have windows defender firewall thing okay now there are inbound and outbound it's like incoming and outgoing right in your phone there are incoming connection and uh, incoming call and outgoing call similarly we have in computers we have inbound connection or something which is incoming and something which is going outside from the computer so we have to um, create a couple of inbound rules so let me right click on inbound rule and then choose new rule clear and i need to go to port and then next i need to open few ports on the computer so port 80 port 80 comma space 443 comma space 1433 comma space 4022 comma space 3389 comma space 8530 comma space 8531 clear everyone so i'm gonna open these ports let's click on next allow the connection next so the computers which are connected to domain network private network or public network whatever the network i'm gonna go next and here sccm firewall policy and finish clear yeah, everyone yes so inbound rule is created okay inbound rule is created now we have to create a few more inbound rules right click and choose new rule and choose predefined and we need to use file and printer sharing file and printer sharing is to download contents from distribution point into the computers so next next and finish clear everyone file and printer yes. sharing
now one more inbound rule right click and choose new rule and predefined windows management instrumentation wmi port is needed for sccm and database connection clear mm -hmm. next next and allow the connection and finish so we have created three inbound rules okay one is file and printer sharing the second one is wmi and the third one is the ports 8530853180443 and all now we have to create one in outbound rule so that the computers will be able to send inventory data to the management point so right click on a outbound rule and new rule and it's going to be predefined and file file and printer sharing and then next next and make sure you choose allow the connection okay and then choose finish so we have created these rules clear so far guys everyone yeah Okay, let me close this. Okay, and I'm going to refresh. Now, let me right click on fire SCCM firewall policy again and click on edit. And expand this policies and expand Windows settings and expand security settings and windows defender okay and outbound i will i am just verifying whether they are present or not yes now so the policies are defined for uh, the communication now i need one more thing I need to go back to this policy and administrative template. Let's choose that one and Windows components. And then I'm going to choose remote desktop services, I think. Yes, remote desktop services. And uh, expand this remote desktop services and expand this remote connection session host i think and connection yeah so remote desktop um, connect desktop session host and connection and in connection we have allow user to connect remotely so i want user to remotely connect to the computers so double click on that and allow that one clear plus I'm going to go to security and choose this required user authentication. So user should authenticate during the uh, okay. network and RDP and that has to be connection by using network level authentication. Okay, so this is for security. I'm going to click on OK. So there are two things what we have done is uh, we have enabled remote desktop connection plus this. Uh, require user authentication now if you would like to see let me just refresh again so the policies uh, policy is created I'm gonna close this Now, if you would like to see whether the policy is applied or not, 
what I'm going to do is, is to run the CMD and type in GP update slash force. This is not mandatory to do it because the policy will get applied automatically in 60 minutes, but I don't want to wait for that. So that's the reason I did manually uh, GP update force so that it will take the policy. Okay, let's go to firewall.cpl to verify whether policy is applied or not. You see policy applied, it says for your security, some of the settings are man managed by your system administrator. And if you go to advanced, advanced setting, and inbound, we created inbound rule, right? You see SCCM firewall policy. So that is applied successfully. Plus, Plus, if you go to this uh, folder and right click on this PC and go to properties and remote setting, right? You see, this is also applied. Allow user to connect to this computer and allow connection only by only from the computer running the remote desktop with network level authentication. So this is also coming by the policy. Got it? Yeah. So we have configured these things through policy and that policy will get applied to the devices. Um, if not, uh, if you do not want it to get applied automatically, you can uh, manually do it yourself like running the policy here cmd and gp update slash force got it yeah. now one last thing what we have to do is point number seven install sql management studio what is SQL Management Studio, guys? Studio. Then only we can see the other. To log into database, you know, to check the tables, to query the yes. database. Basically, it's a tool, the console. Okay. okay? Yes. So I need to do it on database server. So you see i am on i am back on the sql server now database and let me close it so it looks like it got um, installed successfully the sql server and i'm going to close this okay so this looks fine and let me open the internet explorer And the SQL Management Studio is uh, HTTPS colon slash slash tiny URL.com slash uh, S yeah. SQL std sql std and download and download anyway so this is 535 megabyte file i'm gonna click on save so that got downloaded successfully right And that it is a it is on database server case i'm doing it on database box and open folder let's close this browser i don't need this browser so this is the one which we downloaded sms s sms hyphen setup hyphen enu.exe double click on that 
and say yes. And install, simple. SQL Management Studio will get installed in few minutes. So once it is done, then you need to clear. Before that, uh, wrap up uh, that port number you told it eighty four four nine. And other port, 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 what is the purpose? Yeah, other port, you know, there are some few port you enter. May know mm. what is the purpose? You don't know, can you explain that? 80? 443. 443. And, uh, is for? Yeah. SCCM. Yeah. Server. And client. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, that is for yeah. that is for port eight zero and four four three. The yeah. second one one four three three four zero two two. It is needed on database server so that database you will be able to connect to the database. Okay. For database. Okay. Eight five. Three zero eight five three one WSUS and client okay. for patching. Okay. Three three eight nine for remote connection. Yeah. Okay, clear. These are the exactly. things which we Okay, so wait for a few minutes. Yeah, Once sure. it is done, then come yeah. back to this uh, Azure portal. Check all the box. Check all the boxes and choose stop after sure. the installation is done. Okay. Yeah, I'll complete. Fine. Yeah. So make sure make sure you stop them not now. Once yeah, the installation is finished, this installation SQL Management Studio. Yeah. Sure. Okay, any question? Rajneesh from your end? Uh, not now, I will try. This okay, this time. tomorrow so will we I will... get the access on the, all yes. the videos. If I sign step. All the video, yes, all the videos are stored there on Google Drive. You just go to that Google Drive link and all the videos okay. are stored there. Now, tomorrow we will meet only for like half an hour because we just in, need to install a CCM and then we will wrap it up. Only for yeah, half sure. an hour, guys. Okay, six yeah, thirty to sure. seven o'clock. Okay, okay, sure. Okay. Because okay. we are almost we are we have almost done everything. We just need to install uh, SCCM server tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, guys. Thank you, everyone, and uh, yeah. I hope the session was informative. And we'll meet again tomorrow, same time. Thanks. Bye, bye. Thanks. Thanks.